I guess the film I'm proudest of probably is uh, Journey Back, where we took this uh, Auschwitz survivor uh, back to uh, Birkenau and walked him through his horror, uh, where his entire f family of more than 100 people perished. And um, to come back and, uh, and find the perpetrator, to find the man who sent him, him and his family to the, uh, or sent his family to the gas chamber. And some of the survivors of those terrible years in Europe are still imprisoned by their memories. In New York, Jack Garfine was one of them. This is his story, the story of one man's journey back into his past to his native Czechoslovakia. Only by understanding the terrifying years of his childhood can Jack Garfine free himself from his nightmares today. Everything was taken away from me. Everything I had, everything I loved. The, my cousin who I was in love with, who was 12 years old, Varela, my mother, my sister, my grandmother, my grandfather. I was left alone and naked. You know, all those years after the war and, the, uh, and, uh, and Auschwitz, he was still having nightmares. He was still, uh, he, he would get, he could get really angry. He was in, um, he was, this, he was in uh, treatment. He was seeing a psychiatrist even then. Um, and then the, the, the central point of trying to deal with it was he had basically damned his mother on the, on the, uh, under the gates of Auschwitz because he thought she was sending him to his death. My mother, right here. My, I kept holding on to her, you know. I kept holding on to her arm like this, you know. And there was always a kind of a sibling rivalry between my sister and me. So I held on to her and I was very close to her and she suddenly like if I was on this side, Eric, she was suddenly, she held me like, you know, I held, held on to me, right? Yeah, and yeah. she went and shoved me over there. Yeah. You know, but with such hatred, you know, in her face, you know, said, you stupid, I never, you know, don't want to see you, and just shoved me over there. And I remember when I got over here that I, uh, I was, because I thought that she was sending me to my death, I thought that she preferred my sister. Yeah. You know, there was always a sibling rivalry. So I stood over here and I said to myself, I hope she drops dead. That was the real thought. Because I was sure that she was sending me to my death. When she was trying to save you by getting I in with the I didn't know that men. until much later. I went through the whole war hating her. Oh. Because so I thought by shoving me to the men, she was sending me to my death, but obviously she knew that You lived in that night, she and your sister were probably gassed. Well, yeah, uh, they were, not probably, uh, they were. Uh, and then Jack walks us through uh, the most chilling story uh, I've ever encountered. I mean, his, you know, him telling the story of, uh, of uh, how his mother is sort of, he, he thought his mother was sending him to the gas chamber, chamber and um, it turns out she was saving his life. And uh, all the details, his, the details of, of uh, s standing there and, and suddenly in, in the dark circle surrounding uh, Mengele, the, the angel of death, who was about to send him to the gas chamber. And this old man looks over Jack's shoulder and says, this young man and I are world famous mosaic artists. If you spare our lives, we will do glory to the, to the Third Reich. And Mengele went, oh, this is interesting. Okay, boom, boom. And Jack starts into the camp and suddenly stops and turns to, uh, to the, uh, one of the Ukrainian guards and says, uh, I don't know that, old, I don't know that uh, old man. I've never seen him before. And, uh, and the, gu the guard looks at him and says, you stupid little Jewish kike, get in there. The guy has just saved your life. And Jack says, later on, after the war, when I had to write my first essays for the New York school system, how I spent my summer vacation, uh, one of the things I came to understand is that the Greek stories of gods coming down in the guise of men to intervene in the affairs of men uh, happened. That's what happened. My life was saved by this, this man, this old man coming out of nowhere and saving my life. And the details of that story uh, just resonated with all of us. Even in front of Mengele, the angel of death, Jack Garfine didn't know and as a boy couldn't imagine the other part of Auschwitz the part where his mother was sent on this same path. From the map here, I, this is where they had sort of garden and trees. They, what they, that's what they call the gate of death over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they came along here, yeah. and underneath there was where the... Wait a minute, oh, down those stairs? 
That, that was the phony showers where they undressed, got their, their little bar of soap and their towel. And then that must be where the gas chambers were. You know, when you say they, all I can see is my family, you know? Look here. Oh, my God, it is. Where? What? It's the little pieces of bone. Where? This? Huh? Those are pieces of bone. Oh, my God. Where the ashes went. Yeah, it is pieces of bone. God. Look at that. And Jack doesn't know what's going on. He sort of looks down. He picks up in his hand and looks at, and then he realizes in his hand are the ashes and bones of some of the million or two million um, people incinerated at Auschwitz. And I could just feel this horror that had been building slowly through the day, sort of rising through Jack. And, uh, well, none of us who were there will ever forget uh, that moment. Come on. 